Out of your belly shall flow what? Rivers. Rivers. Rivers of what? And this spake he of what? The Spirit. Out of our innermost being. They're in there. And they're there for, it's, he's there for a reason. Not only sustain your life, but he's there to affect other lives. I think probably that's what we're going to glean in some measure here this morning. The question is asked at the very beginning. Is someone waiting for you? Someone waiting for you. Just to pass by. When? Where? Who are they? They're unbeknownst to us, but not unbeknownst to our God. I'd like to start this morning with a story that Andrew Womack, of his encounter with a Buddhist by divine appointment. Question, do you think that you can set up a divine appointment? We can comply with a divine appointment. We can want to participate in a divine appointment. I thought to myself, I'm going to try to keep any personal stories out of this this morning. But here we are, and we're just, we just superseded Andrew. It used to be, it used to be, it was, I was sitting in pews somewhat similar to all of us. Yet, our phone would ring and the guy on the other end says, this is the case wherever it was at. And sometimes you'd think at the end of a week when you'd been gone putting her every night that you could stand a break. But the interesting thing happened. When we got that break, I was kind of lost and forlorn. You know, just kind of, just kind of out there. And I would pray, Lord, can't you, somewhere you can pick this up, can't you? And guess what happened? He's not got so many people that he won't use us, you know. <laughs> he doesn't have so many people that he won't come along and pick us up and set us forth for him. Andrew Womack encountered this Buddhist. Here is the status. Here is the state. Every year, I minister in Charlotte, North Carolina, every year since 1980s. A friend has a business there. He asked if I would speak to his employees. As I was leaving, I saw an Asian woman answering the phones. Not seeing her in the meeting, I stopped and talked with her. Are you near here? I asked. Yes, she replied. I started last week. Oh, okay. Well, how come you weren't back there in the meeting? I'm the new person. Been there, done that. So they had me answer the phones. Who are you? She says. I told her who I was, Andrew Womack. And she said, what do you do? I'm a minister. Her response, her question is, it kind of caught my attention. For who? For who? For whom are you a minister? Now, we take it, ah, uh ah, -uh. not her. For Jesus, I said, you must be the one, she explained, exclaimed to him. I asked her what she was talking about, and she explained that she was a Buddhist. The night before, she was performing her Buddhist worship and suddenly disillusioned with the whole thing and said, this isn't it. Buddhist is not it. She told how she spoke out, God, I know you are real. I know you exist, but I don't know who you are. Mm -mm -mm. Would you reveal yourself to me? Isn't this interesting? How many of us said, who are you, God? Would you reveal yourself to us, to me? Do we want him to reveal us? himself to us. 
Well, there's another interesting question. Then she recounted how a pulsating ball of light appeared and hung right in front of her. She said she knew it was God, but she asked anyway, who are you? She said she knew it was God, but as she asked, a voice replied, tomorrow I'll send a man who will tell you who I am. You must be the one, she exclaimed. I'm the one, Andrew said. I'm the one. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm the one. I'm it. <laughs> kind of reminds you of Isaiah 6 8. Let's just screw it up on the board. Isaiah 6 8. This is Isaiah. Here's a question being asked I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Isaiah said, here am I, send me. That's our cry, isn't it? Here am I, send me. We cannot get so comfortable that we don't go. We can't get so uncomfortable that we refuse to go. I'm not capable of going. I don't have time. I'm not built for this. Have you ever heard any of these expressions? They never jumped up inside of you anywhere or fastened in your ear. Okay, let me go on with Andrew's story. I went on to tell her about Jesus, and she was born again, baptized in the Holy Spirit. It was awesome. I left that place thinking, God, I was in the right place at the right time. I was exactly where I was supposed to be. God knew he could count on me to be there and follow his leading. So he told the woman to, ex so he told the woman to expect me. I can't even describe, he said, the peace, the satisfaction, the joy that came from knowing we are right where God wants us to be. Something happens when you know that with everything, you are doing what God created you to do. Who is waiting for you? Where are they? When will they meet? When will we meet them? All arrangements have been made by our God. He's in Enabled by God, planning, enabled by God's planning, his will, and God's good pleasure. Psalms 37, 23 says this. The steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. The steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. Do you feel like he's directing your life? Directing your path, where you go, or is it just you just on remote and just function when pressures drive you one place or the other? Mm. God has been making plans for us, just for the record. Can I say this to you? God has been making plans for us. No, there's no exceptions here, none. God has been making plans for us before we were created. Yeah? During the creative process. Mm. As well as the ministry that he's assigned to each one of us. During our life here on earth. As well as our expectation of a place he's prepared for us where with a glorified body we'll go to be with him. We all expect that. How about the expectation prior to that of living this life with his footsteps ordained of God? Hmm? We, the scripture tells us to walk even as he walked. Footsteps. Now I'm just not 
talking about sound effects. She's not here this morning, but we had a Zach's mother, Jason's grandmother, would say, I hear footprints. Some of you might view God's presence as footprints. Just footsteps. Just steps that he's orchestrated for us to take. Absolutely. You see, we are very special in his sight. Very, very special. Each and every one of us, very, very special. Psalms 139, verses 13 through 18, out of the Living Bible. You say, well, I asked Bill, I said, is this the first that we ever had, ever seen a Living Bible on screen? <laughs> but we are, well, it's up there today. Now, we'll, we'll just read this. You made, David is talking, you made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit them together Where? in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. It is amazing to think about. Your workmanship is marvelous, and how well I know it. Think about that. You are a wondrous, complex being, ordained, orchestrated, created by a creator, with life, he knew this in the womb. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? You were there while I was being formed in utter seclusion. You saw me before I was born and scheduled, what? Each day of my life before I began to breathe. Life? <laughs> Every day was recorded in your book. How precious is it, Lord, to realize that you were thinking about me constantly. You wonder where he's at. David is saying, you think about me all the time. All the time you think about me. All the time. No, no, no. Don't wonder where he's at. In him, he's here. He's thinking about you every day. And so on it goes. Let me read that again. How precious is it, Lord, to realize that you are thinking about me constantly. I can't even count how many times a day your thoughts turn toward me. And when I waken in the morning, you are still thinking of me. You thought you got left somewhere? Not true. Not true in the least. Quite frankly, though, we go through steps and stages until separation and the divine call with divine enablements. I'm going back to the Living Bible one more time this morning and go to look for Galatians 1, 13 through 16. This is Paul. This is Paul's assessment of himself. I don't know what your view of your past life is, but this is Paul's view of his past life. This is his assessment. You know what I was like when I followed the Jewish religion. How I went about after the Christians mercilessly, hunting them down and doing my best to get rid of them. Now, isn't they a fine fellow? You say, not so much, maybe. Okay? I was one of the most religious Jews of my own age in the whole country and tried as hard as I possibly could to follow all the old traditional rules of my religion. There's no place to get caught up. All right? But then something happened. For even before I was born, God has chosen me to be his and called me. What kindness and grace. Up to this point, Paul had it wrong and lived wrong. I'd like to take this 15th verse and I'll read it right here. I'll read it right here again, and then we're going to go to King James and read just the 15th. And then something happened. For even before I was born, God has chosen me to be his and called me. What kindness and grace. 
Here we go. Verse 15, King James. I think I may have just not clued him in and I left him a gasp up there. King James. Oh, excuse me, Galatians 1.15. You're right, I'm wrong again. Just for the record, I told Bill that the other day and he smiled and says, not the first time. <laughs> Didn't you do that? Yes, you did. Didn't he, Chris? Yeah, he did. Okay, here's King James of that 15th verse I read earlier. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. Let me break these words down for you this morning. When it pleased God, it pleased God to separate me, Paul said, separate, divinely set apart for God's service by divine commission from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, called me, invited me to participate in the privileges of the gospel called to demonstrate externally his son within me. In other words, the, the son that was with him, he wanted to express it outwardly to other people. Wow. Isn't that neat? It is neat. Have we got any idea what God will do with us if we allow him to? Okay, let's go on back to 16 in the Living Bible. To reveal his son within me so that I could go to the Gentiles and show them the good news about Jesus. Wow. You may think that you're not qualified to go where he sends you, do what he asks, give what he wants, you may think you're not qualified. I tell you, this becomes clear. Notice with me, please. Paul was a Jew of the Jews. We just heard his testimony. Wasn't he? He was a Jew of the Jews. He knew the law inside out. He persecuted the church of Jesus Christ, was separated, and sent to whom? The Gentiles. He was sent to the Gentiles. This Jew of Jews was sent to the Gentiles to teach him grace and the other revelations that he received from God on a desert place. Isn't that something? You say, well, that's Paul. Well, let's take a look at Peter. Very briefly, we're going to look at Peter. Notice Peter. What was he? He was a Jewish fisherman. Hmm? Rough, tough fisherman. He could verbalize with anybody. Wasn't always right, but he could verbalize with everybody. And he opened his mouth normally to put the other foot in it. Been there? Done that? Yeah. And he was sent to the legalistic Jews. <laughs> you say, well, that's strange. God's got a plan. He's got a plan before you were born. We just need to know what his plan is. We still need to be hungering no matter what age we are, just for the record. You could be young like Jason Nate. You could be older, like the guy sitting right there. <laughs> Good morning. Don't feel bad for him. He's a relative. <laughs> All right. Think about this. Yet, he still got a plan for you. Yep. 96 years old. Still got a plan. 
Still got a, a place to minister. Still. You, I don't think we run out of places due to age. I think sometimes we let them drift by due to comfort. You ever get just comfortable? Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I've done my thing. Hello, you're not done. You're not done. I'm not done. You're not done. Just because you think you can, you're not done. What do we hunger and thirst for? Hmm? Both Paul and Peter, by steps and stages, came to the point of separation. Both heard the divine call. You also have come to the place of separation. You changed your destiny by the new birth, surrendering your life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. God has put abilities in you and fulfilled his ministry through you. It only takes your cooperation. I don't want you to feel guilty. I just want you to be about the master's business. Okay? Simple as that. Not complex. Well, I'm not you. No, no, no. Nobody expects you to be me. I don't expect to be you. That's evident, isn't it? Uh-huh. Absolutely. Boy. Remember, it's not based on your natural abilities. It's based solely on God's plan for your life. Allow your God to express through you the potential he placed inside you. You have a special purpose. Going to work because it beats starving to death is a terrible way to live your life. Just for the record. How much better to live your life with the expectation I've got divine appointments to make, to meet. I, he works with me. And he shares with me. And I tell you, he does things with you and for you even at the strangest times. You think you may have tripped and you're not so good? I testify. I'm not going to tell you the whole story, but I'm going to tell you part of the story. I come back from Mary and Harvey's. Stopped in at a, a business and a guy began to take after me. Somebody mentioned this morning, she says, you got victory at McDonald's. I said, yeah, you know, that's fine. I can sit there in a long line and never turn a hair anymore. But this was the middle of the line of an aggressive person. And I felt kind of bad, and I did apologize. And I went on home. And a person from that business came by the house to bring us something. And in the process, he was a young man. You say, well, he says, now, you can imagine back at the business. Chatter, chatter, chatter. He says, you're a pastor. Oh, well, where did he get that? He wasn't even at work when I was there. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're a pastor. I said, yes. Now, let me tell you how I got there. <laughs> okay? I'll tell you how I got there. And give him the supernatural state of the events that led to that. He was working on what he was doing, and the conversation had kind of stopped, and he says, that is a great story. Finished his work, left there. And I thought, whoa, isn't that interesting? You see, that didn't go quite like I thought it ought to. You know, by divine prescription, you, you, you would be different than that. You would think, folks, are we always looking for a place to sow the seed? Hmm? And willing to take that and let them pick it up and go with it. I expect he'll remember that story for quite a long time. So, going to work beats starving to death. And 
that's just a terrible way to live your life. Know and then do what God calls you to do. To know it and not do it is another ball game. So know and do it. Live your life according to his divine purpose. Someone is waiting for you. Who? Where? When? God isn't keeping his plan a secret. Wow. Salvation through faith in Christ is a universal will for every person on earth. 2 Peter 3.9 says this, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. All should come to repentance. Acts 11.18, God granted the Gentiles repentance unto life. He has provided the means of repentance unto life for everybody on the planet. Everybody on the planet, whether you think so or not, has an inner voice, so to speak, an inner knowing that there is a God, just like that Buddhist. I know there, I know there is a God, and Buddhist isn't it. I know, but who will tell me? We have them. We have them up and down our streets, in our homes, people who don't have a clue. We work with them, live with them, come across them. Romans 10, 13 says this, Whosoever, every one of those, whosoever, shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's sozo, deliver, heal, protected, set free, be made whole. John 3, 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, born from above. Our new birth is a birth from above. All right? Source of divine life. Or he cannot see the kingdom of God. Romans 10, 9. Thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Number two. Once you are in fellowship with God, move on and find his specific purpose for you. 2 Timothy 1.12. For which cause I also suffer these things. Nonetheless, I am not ashamed. For I know with, know with absolute knowledge, void of doubt, I know whom I have believed. And am persuaded that he's able to keep, guard, defend, watch, preserve that which I've committed, deposited unto him against that day. Now that sounds very good, don't it? I, I like that myself. He's tr absolutely trustworthy. With God, commitments are still very important. They're still a priority. God keeps that and only that which we commit to him. Ooh. We commit ourselves, spirit, soul, and body, our entire life and ministry. God also commits himself to ensure our ongoing upkeep you guys realize we do have a little upkeep, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, he helps us maintain keeping our lives. By divine provision in this life and our eternal inheritance in the next. I'm going to sit down. Ready? Today, the steps and stages of separation and separation comes from the God of second chances or another chance. I'm going to talk, probably talk more about this next week. The God of second chances. Have you received more than one invitation? Uh -huh. Absolutely. In the first book of Samuel, chapter 13, it's the story of the first king of Israel. His name was Saul. Saul had a character flaw. Can you imagine that? Saul had a character flaw. Lo and behold, that same flaw has worked its way into mankind today. 
Well, what are you talking about, Lynn? The tendency is, amongst mankind, to do whatever is in their immediate best interest. Shall I read that again? The tendency is to do whatever is in their best interest, regardless of whether or not it's the right thing to do. We got people, there's people, oh boy. Christians should never live like that. Can I just go ahead and say that? should never live like that. No. We should be people of integrity. Hmm? God's plan and will should be non-negotiable to us. What do you mean? I mean we comply. We comply. You say, he'll take care of me. I won't guarantee you that. I, won't, I mean, I won't deny you that. I'm scheduled for heaven. I said, the reservation's in. Cool. But we're living this life here. How do we want to live it? Becomes the question. In other words, don't compromise. Dale from the Ukraine has been on that for weeks and months. And every once in a while, he slides it into our compromise our entire conversation. Don't compromise. And then there's a couple other ones that go with it. So <laughs> it's easy for me to say here, don't compromise. I've been on the end, receiving end of that. You may have made some bad decisions. Don't get caught up in reliving past mistakes. Just start seeking God. Submit yourself to him. He can take you from where you are today and make your plan for your life better than you ever imagined that plan would be. Can you imagine that? I've been hurt. I've been hurt. Okay? Put the hurt on the one that can carry it. You say, how do I do that? You just you put it there and don't take it back. You say, well, it comes crawling back. Well, leave it there. You say, well, you don't know what you're saying. I think I do. At least in some measure. Cast all your care on him for he cares for you. Amen. All of it. He didn't say part of it. All of it. Wow. 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7, saying this. Humble yourselves. Oh, boy. Americans like to do that, don't we? Humble yourselves. <laughs> you mean I don't get to be the big cheese? Oh, not in all cases, you don't. Mm -hmm. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Steps. Stages. Plan. It'll happen. By casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Why is it that we can confidently cast all our care upon the Lord? It's because we know he cares for us. He that spared not his own son. Romans 8, 32. Here, you're going to have to read this. Here, here you go. Look at this. He that spared not his own son, God spared not his own son, Jesus, delivered, God delivered Jesus up for who? Us who? Us all. You can't get away from it. Okay, the sacrifice is there for all. How shall he not with him also do what? Freely. That's without charge, isn't it? Freely do what? Give? Us. What's next? All things. Did I print that? Did I author that? Not so. God authored that. 
don't come to me for the guarantee. It's got someone bigger than me back of it. Somebody with more whatever's back of it. The guy that can afford to put paving of gold on his streets, etc. Provided what's ever. All. I, can, you, can we grasp a hold of that? That is an awesome statement. All. I'm glad I don't have to guarantee it. Nor do I have to water it down, and I best not. Okay? If he says all, I believe all. Greek of that is any, every, or the whole. He delivered him up for us all, any, every, or the whole of mankind, if you will. How shall he not with him also freely, freely, without charge, give us all, any, every, or the whole of what? Things. I don't know what things are. I've never been able to get a good handle on the definition of things. The things are different to each one of us, I think, in a measure. What is it that, that, what is it that I need? Don't mean the guy sitting next to you needs the same thing. But here is a promise that includes all things freely. Now, let me do this with you. To those God has waiting for you, when you meet them, remember Matthew 10, 8. Here you go. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. What does it say? Freely, freely, without charge, you have received. Yeah. Freely, without charge, give. I don't make that promise either. I don't ensure that. Jesus does through the Father. That's what he told his disciples to go do. Oh, disciples. Oh, disciples. Hang on. Are we disciples? This is not in the script at all. Are we disciples? Yes. John 8, 31 and 32, I hope. Let's try it. Wow. Then said Jesus to those Jews, which, hello, when he quoted to me that back off of uh, Lemuel Street in Muskegon, wasn't it? Years and years ago. Because I had people telling me to do these things that you just read on the board. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, all those things. And all I could see was the disciples doing it. I'm a, but remember, Lex has some relation to perhaps his uncle. Perhaps he might have had these same questions once or twice. I had them. And upstairs in the house in Lemuel in Muskegon Heights, Michigan, I read these verses. I come out of there a changed man. And said Jesus to those Jews. I just knew whatever the Jews had. I was a Gentile. And I wasn't always so sure I wasn't a Jew. You know, there's ten lost tribes of them. Be that as it may. Which believed on him. If you continue in my word. If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. I've told you this before. I used to split indeed. My brother took me to task one day. His dad, by the way. <laughs> he says, that's one word. I said, I don't know. I kind of like two. Because indeed. You translate that. If you're going to do those things, you're going to do them by deeds, right? Yeah, indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Freely you have received. Now, do what with it? Freely give. That's awesome. Just awesome to contemplate. So, for those God has waiting for you, when you meet them, freely you have received, freely give. Share. Share. Now, but get ready to take the boundaries off. Whatever you think, 
may not be how it's going to happen. All right? May not be. He may put you places. You wonder what in the world you're doing there. It's just not right. You've heard stories against being there. Come on, little brother, let's go see these guys. <laughs> Off we go. Little brother, his dad, brought this honking big Bible. And we, as we walked into the bar, walked by the bar to the dance floor and underneath the light where the, the only table that wasn't occupied was under the light. So he plunked the Bible on the table and because <laughs> we was there to see one of the guys in the band. We said, what happened? The waitress came over, what is that? <laughs> you know, what is that? You ever hear the story? Oh, okay, so anyhow, the end result of that was the band stopped playing pretty quick. The guy we went to see come over and sat under the little light with us. <laughs> and we invited him to church and Sunday school. Well, this is Saturday night. <laughs> so he said, I can't get up. He said, you'd have to wake me up. I said, we can do that. <laughs> so every Sunday morning, we'd call him. <laughs> get him up. Come on. You say, well, is that all right? That's fine. He made the deal. He's a, he made the commitment. I didn't make it. I was willing to call him. I fulfilled my end. What happened to him? Ah, he played for us for a number of years. And, and Ruth just ate him up because he could play anything she could sing. And, uh, and in the right key normally. Because he couldn't read music. Played by ear. So uh, there you are. Uh, what happened to the rest of the band? By matter of fact, the band leader had been an ex-pastor. And the whole band ended up getting saved. There's some of the relatives still you chase around and you meet them if you're living down in that country. And they're still there. It's just an awesome thing. Follow him. Follow him. I'm going to tell you a story conclusion here this morning. And as close as I'm going to get to his name is Sean Bowles. Well, who's Sean Bowles? Well, he's a missionary's son that come to the realization that God was who he said he was and would do what he said he'd do. And then he said, well, if you do it here, I wonder if you do it elsewhere. And he found out he'll do it around the world. Now, isn't that, isn't that something? So, this you can find the Facebook account under Sean Bowles, B-O-L-Z, by the way, under Hearing God's Voice. He'd been holding the meeting, and after the service, they put him up in a fancy condo on the edge of the red light district. This was in another country, so that there's a language barrier with the driver. Sean was hungry, and he couldn't get it communicated. <laughs> All right, so the driver dropped him off, and here he is. I, he was famished, he was hungry, but then he heard that down the street and around the corner was a Subway sandwich shop. And now the adventure begins. Are you ready? So he steps out of the condo, walks down the street, and around the corner to eat. A pimp, underage you would say, I don't know if they have to be a certain age, but very young, young boy, Asked if he wanted a girl. And she was standing there on the street, 16 years old. Sean walks over to the girl and saying, I'm a pastor. Can I pray for you? He did. Then he asked her, Do you know what God wants to do with your life? No, she didn't know. Pray this, would you? Holy Spirit, you've created me for something. Isn't that what we've been hearing? Huh? You've created me for something. What is it? Ooh. What had she heard? So he asked. She said, I'm to be a cook. <laughs> you see? Uh, hello? Is she qualified? Yeah. Do you, do you ever cook? No. Have you ever cooked? No. <laughs> no. Hmm. 
then do this. Ask the Lord for one step this week that you can take. So he said, we prayed. She said, not, oh, this time. I'm to call my uncle. He owns a diner. I don't know him. My mother don't associate with her brother because neither did the daughter at that point. The, the mother was on drugs and the brother was a Christian. Have you ever figured out that drugs and God don't mix? Have you got that, you know? That, that just does not, that's not, that's not a foundation you want. No, sir. So Sean gave her his card with his phone number. Call me when you make contact with your uncle. The next week, he answered his phone. The girl with zero options, about to be sold for sex, called him the next week. She had made the call. The uncle, inv the uncle invited her to live with them. She would go ahead and get her GED, and her uncle would give her employment. Six months passed. Another call. She's celebrating her 17th birthday. She's now 17 years old, and in the past six months, she has probably learned to cook because she's now the assistant manager of her uncle's diner. She focused. Her uncle had left the house and was in the process of buying her a birthday gift. He says he's gone now to do it. You see, she said, he's going to purchase another diner. Which I am to be co-owner of with my uncle. Within six months, the girl of the streets being sold for sex with zero options, now a co-owner of a business at 17. See, God has a plan. Ask him. We are God's masterpiece. Who is waiting for you? Where are they waiting? When will I see them? How many will I meet? What will I share with them? To those God has waiting for you, freely give. You have received freely, give freely. Father, you do have a plan for each and every life. Each and every life. Each and every life. There is a plan. There is a plan. Father, may we just step into it. Reveal to each one of us that wants it, your plan. Reveal your divine direction. Reveal the step we're to take this afternoon, next week, weeks after, and the time to come. There's no end to this plan of yours. It'll take many forms, but every form will end with an opportunity to share Jesus Christ with a hurting world. May we effectively Share the glorious gospel of Christ in all the days that we have left. May we purpose to listen and to hear. May we then we purpose to not only hear, but do. And then not only do, but see the dramatic change is wrought in people's lives where we pass by. Because you confirmed the word. 
with signs following. Thank you, Father. Praise, honor, and glory is all given to you. In Jesus' blessed name, amen. If you would like prayer, feel free to 